Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we have a lot of um, Pokemon X and Y scrapped content to go over. I don't really know how I missed this during the whole Terra leak, but apparently I have. So we're going to go and talk about all this. So if you're going to enjoy this video, be sure to leave a like, subscribe if you're brand new, and let's just jump right on into it. So first things first, this is all from Eclipse on Twitter, so, so shout out to them, um, because if they didn't compile this, I wouldn't be making this video to show you guys. I don't think Eclipse's account is private anymore, because I think, yes, it's not. So you can go follow uh, Eclipse now if you'd like, as um, the whole Terra Leak situation is kind of like dropped down now, quietened down. So if you are new to the channel from that, just be aware that uh, it has kind of dropped. So the amount of videos that you'll see will probably drop a little bit as well. But, you know, if I miss something and find it, I'll cover it again. Or if I am... Or if I'm obviously able to, um, if I miss something, I'll come back to it. But anyway, <coughs> here are some of the X and Y cut content. So, Soaring in the Sky was planned, but postponed to Auras. That was uh, where you can fly around in the sky to certain areas, which is a pretty cool feature. Personal gym creation with online gym challenge and defeating another person would let you recruit them as mob for your gym. I don't know what mob means, but like a, a, a trainer to battle them with. And an instant hatching facility to hatch multiple eggs in a few clicks. That's crazy. The egg thing, anyway. Everything else I'm not too fussed about. Because obviously we've got Soaring in the Sky in the end. The online gym's kind of cool, but I can also see that being... um, Like them making a My Pokemon gym. So I can see that being like, like a side game. I can see that being a thing that doesn't really matter. Or like a mobile game. But the instant hatching is incredible. And that's crazy that that was cut. Um... Raihon Race minigame was meant to, uh, was planned in depth for a bunch of ideas, but they wanted to recreate classic Mario Kart using Pokemon moves. It was also fought for online communication. That's kind of cool. And obviously this is just um, the Raihon Race. It's the Pokemon version of the Mario Kart engine. Um, it was only replaced in some places in X and Y. And obviously it's literally just the exact um, thing as uh, Mario Kart. And that's what they tried to recreate it. Um, Basically, but instead of cars, you're on a Rhyhorn, and obviously that was going to be online. I, I don't know if they would have been able to get away with it, if it was the exact same as Mario Kart, because, you know, Mario Kart is a big seller, but I guess you've got other games like Crash Team Racing and all that lot um, that basically um, can do it. So there probably is, you know, a way around to do a kart race or a Rhyhorns, but I don't know, maybe they scrapped it because it might have caused problems. I don't know. Um... They released Pokemon Evolution. Once you freed a Pokemon in the wild, there is a chance it will come back evolved. What? Oh, released Pokemon Evolution. Once you freed a Pokemon in the wild, there's a chance it will come back evolved. But if you release something in the wild, you can't get it back. Oh, does that mean you release it, you carry on, and then it will just randomly turn up in your box? I'm guessing that's kind of cool, and it will be evolved, so you might want to use it again. That's kind of cool. Um, unevolved Pokemon bonus, raising your Pokemon by evolving them, would bring them an extra stab damage of 1.5 to 2, and stat boost at level 30 plus after Evo Cap. That's kind of cool. So that's kind of like what Ash gets in the anime, because obviously Pikachu can evolve, but uh, he doesn't. And uh, it's really bulky, and a lot, quite a lot of Ash's team in the anime doesn't evolve, and they're fairly strong by themselves. Um, so that would have been like, more like an anime influence of the games, which is kind of cool. Um, but unfortunately, uh, what was scrapped, which is a shame because that sounds really cool. Um, your friend, uh, which is likely Kaylin or Serena, based on the choice, was a Pokemon turned human later to be revealed in the gameplay. That's weird. Glad that was cut. A mysterious space location where you can battle a reflection of yourself with your identical team. That's crazy. Um, and final weapon was a Pokemon virus. I guess it's a virus, not a massive like meteorite or whatever it was. Um, but that's crazy. Um, a mirror image of yourself. How cool would that have been if it tracked how you played? And then used that against you? That would have been absolutely insane. And the fact that like turns out you were a Pokemon disguise, that was weird. So I'm glad that was scrapped. Um uh, Mesuda Sketch uh, talked about implementing around 30-ish mega Pokemon. That's crazy. They did end up with 28, uh, possibly missing Jinx and Flygon. Okay, that makes sense. Um, Game Freak discussed about recycling Pokemon battle animations. Okay, which is what they do now anyway. They do recycle animations. 
Um, I'm guessing this is okay. This is how megas work. It's Cappy, Weedle. No, yeah, must be Weedle. Uh, Weedle. Um, no, Weedle, Kakuna, Beedrill, Mega Beedrill. Because there's no Mega Battle Free. That's why I'm assuming that that that's what those Pokemon are meant to be. Um, which is kind of cool, I guess. I do like that. And obviously, we all know now that now they do reuse animations. Um, obviously, we did this the other day. Um, Zeno was supposed to have an X. No, Zygarde would have an X form and a Y form. They were like, they they were the way the only Pokemon that were like they were like the what was it? So anyway, uh, we've gone over this before. Uh, Zygarde was supposed to have an X form and a Y form. Uh, the X was based on a wolf to hunt Xerneas, and Y was based on an anti echo weapon to hunt Eveltal. We did cover that, so if you want to see that, just watch the most recent video uh, before this, I think it was. But basically, Z uh, the two Zygar forms are meant to be counterparts to defeat uh, Xerneas and Eveltal. Those forms are restyled into the Zygar 10% and Zygar 100%. But we covered that. Um, anyway. Um, up next is Zygarde in Pokemon Z was ha uh, had to surveil, I don't know what that means, upon Xerneas and Eveltal, fighting them to restore them to balance, which obviously is basically a very Quasar situation. It changed into his forms for facing these two Pokemon in the previous tweet. Okay, so basically Pokemon Z is effectively what Pokemon Emerald was to Ruby and Sapphire. So basically Zygarde is like the peace bringer and like the middleman. Like obviously in, in Sa Ruby and Sapphire, very Quasar stops. Tiger and Groudon, but in Pokemon Z, Zygarde was supposed to stop Xerneas and Eveltal and be like, take them out. That's kind of cool. But yeah, we did cover that. Um, in Sun and Moon, Sienna and Dexio consider a certain Pokemon a threat to the ecosystem, sending you and Zygarde to face it. The plot takes place in Restoration Cave, where you discover Zygarde came to Alola to defeat this Pokemon. In the final version, there is Guzzlord in the area. Not um, Zygarde. And it says, uh, A Guzzlord appears here during the fifth Ultra Beast mission. Guzzlord responds immediately if defeated or run from. Guzzlord is not registered in the Pokedex and is seen as question mark, question mark, question mark until the first one is caught and it is coded to be not shiny. Obviously, in Ultra Moon, it says Zygarde appears here after becoming champion. If defeated or run from, it respawns after the whole fame. Obviously, it can't be shiny. So, again, in regular Sun and Moon, you have a um Guzzlord and in Ultra Sun and Moon you have Zygarde so obviously the point is Zygarde went to defeat um Guzzlord which is uh, pretty cool and that is all the X and Y cut content I have come across um to massive thread obviously all from Eclipse so shout out to you and here's the thing as well since we may as well cover that as well we've got some concept art um I believe that's it yeah that's it and um, concept art of red and blue from the Alola games. Obviously, they come in the battle facility, battle tower, whatever it is. And um, they are 20, I think you said what they were, in the time of this coming out. Because obviously, that's probably the same time as what uh, the difference in the from Gen 1 game to Gen 7 was probably like 20 years. I don't know. But obviously, uh, there were 10. So, it's, it's a 10-year time gap, effectively. But as you can see, you got a... Um, balance here and not balance a um concept art of red and a concept art of blue even though it's wearing green but i think in japan he's called green because po pokemon red and green were the games but it, everywhere else it's called blue because they did pokemon red and blue so uh, yeah again they are literally just doing the same thing they're just it's just the two different characters and uh yeah that is basically yeah it's kind of cool um and i think that is everything for this yeah, yeah they're officially 20 years old so that's everything before this video. Hopefully you guys did enjoy it. Um, Fiona is a semi-mythical, but I think we covered that the other day. And um, yeah, okay. That's everything for this video. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed it. If you did, which I'll do like, subscribe for our brand new. As mentioned at the start, the Terra Leak stuff is practically done now, unless it kicks back up again. So the channel will probably slow down with uploads. So thank you again for the massive support. And thanks so much for watching this video. Hopefully you guys did enjoy it. If you did, be sure to like, subscribe for brand new. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in a bit.